Welcome. In this lesson, we're going to be covering how to set up a turntable animation. I've got my completed book in here, and I'm going to import the other two props that we made for our monster by going under File, Import, and it's taking me out to my Scenes directory. If you don't have your project set up, you'll want to do that first, which is coming under File, Set Project, and you'll want to choose the top directory and just hit set. I've already done that, so I'm just going to go ahead and select import and I'm going to choose the bottle first. And it's complaining about a couple little things in there. Okay, so here's my bottle. It's brought it into the center. I'm going to just move my book over here, get it out of the way. And then I'm going to come back and import my glass. Okay, and the glass has not been textured yet. It's also at a much different scale, as you can see. So I'm going to scale that down so it fits within the scene better. So right about there. And the first thing I'm going to do is just finish this off right here. It needs to have the history cleaned up on it, so I'm going to come under Edit, Delete by Type History and clean it up. And then I'm going to place a smooth modifier on it. You can take it down to its original state here, division of zero, or up to about two. Two is probably a little dense for this one. I'm going to just leave it at one. Okay, and then I'm going to Select it in object mode, right mouse click, and assign a new material. And I'm going to choose a fong. And under here I'm going to give it the same treatment that I did with the bottle. I'm going to choose a ramp shader right here. And you can see that it's disoriented right here. It's got the UVs laid out incorrectly. I'm just going to correct that by selecting it and choosing cylindrical mapping. And that's just going to reorient the UVs in the correct direction. Q to get out of that. And then if I come back here to object mode, I should be able to come out to my Fong and rename that Glass Fong. Okay, and out here I'm going to sample some colors. So maybe starting with dark yellow at the base, and up here we put it towards a green. I'm doing something similar that I did with the bottle, and then I'm going to place one here in the middle, and maybe orient this towards a little bit different color. Maybe we'll touch on that blue that we've got on our book cover here. Got a little bit of blue. So I'll tie that in and I can slide these around. I want to maybe bring the yellow up a little bit more on the stem. I can do that. Okay, so I'm going to clean up my scene file here a little bit. I've got some extra things in here that I don't need that came in when I imported the other scenes. So I'm just going to highlight what is not necessary and go ahead and delete them. And we've got an image plane here that we don't need. Uh, I've got another image plane here we don't need. So just cleaning everything up. And I can rename these out here as well. So this is my bottle group. Okay, so that leaves me with the book group, the bottle, and I did not rename this right here. I'm going to go ahead and call this glass. Okay, And it's keeping the path in there from its origins, so uh, that's what you're seeing right there. Okay, so we've got all of these in here, and I'm going to place them in the scene, and you'll notice that I just uh, selected this. I used the arrow key and arrowed up. So what that does is it selects the group. Instead of uh, the children down in here, it's selecting the parent. Okay, so if I come out here and select the label, I can arrow up and it will grab the whole group. Okay, and that's how we want to move things around. Okay, so selecting the group, I'm going to nudge this over a little bit. I'm going to select the book and make sure I'm at the group level here. And with the book, 
because we're making a turntable animation and this is flat, we don't really see it very well if we're viewing at it at this angle here and rotating around. So I'm going to kind of create a scene here where I uh, make a few of these. I'm going to rotate it around like this to the back and I'm going to duplicate it. Command D if you're on a Mac or Control D if you're on a PC. And move the first one up. And I'm going to rotate that one just a little bit off so it looks like a little bit more of a natural stacking of books. Duplicate that again, move it up. Same thing, I'm going to just rotate it back and maybe move it a little over to the side and duplicate it one more time. Control D. And this one I'm going to bring out here towards the front. I'm going to rotate it back towards the camera like this. So now we can see the book and we'll just place it here so it looks like it's leaning about like that okay so that looks good and the book is still uh, a little larger than everything else I'm gonna scale these up to match And placing them on the grid here, scaling this up. And if you want to duplicate this and have another one, uh, you can do that as well. I'm just going to leave my single one here. And the books, I want to actually take all of those and push them back. So I've got my first group here, and then I'm just going to click and drag these and push all of those back a little. Okay. All right, so I've got these in place. And the next thing we're gonna do is select everything over here in the outliner. I'm just gonna click and drag. This is gonna grab everything in the scene at the group level. And I'm gonna group everything. So Control G or Command G if you're on a Mac. That's gonna group everything. And I'm gonna call this the turntable. And this is what we're going to animate. So we've got everything within our scene. We want to animate at this group level here. It's kind of the master group level. And this will allow everything to rotate around from one pivot point instead of uh, applying separate animations to each one of these. Okay, so we're going to come down to the timeline here. We're on frame one. And we're just going to make this 200 frames. We're going to keep it simple. So I'm going to select this, make sure I'm selected at the top level. On frame one, everything is zeroed out over here in the channel box, which I want. Okay, so I'm going to hit S on the keyboard. That's going to create a that's going to create a keyframe. Everything should highlight red. And you'll see a red tick mark down here on the first frame. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag and go all the way down to frame 200. Okay. So on frame 200, I'm going to come under the Y rotate channel and type in 360 and hit enter. And just make sure I am on, on the turntable group level here and hit S again. And that will set another keyframe. You can see it down here. Okay. And you can see it changing here. You can either scroll back and forth in here. You can also just play it. And depending on your uh, graphics card and memory, uh, it may be stuttering a little bit like mine is. I'm on my laptop. I'm going to open up this icon right here as a shortcut to the preferences for animation. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to say instead of play every frame, I'm going to say real time 24 frames per second and save. And this will give me a little bit more accurate uh, representation of the time on here. Okay, you can also do what's called a play blast. Under the animation menu set, you can select play blast. And this will just render out a very quick and low resolution movie of your animation here. 
and it's still loading right now. Okay, so there it is. Okay, so we have our animation set. The next thing we want to do is create a render cam. Instead of using the perspective camera, we want to create a unique camera for rendering. So I'm coming under Create, Cameras, Camera. That creates a camera down here. And I'm going to just click on that and call it render underscore cam. Okay, and we're still looking through the perspective camera. Uh, you can see our camera has dropped right out here in uh, the 000 space. I'm going to go ahead and look through that camera. There it is right there. And I'm going to just back it out and set it up kind of straight on, similar to where the perspective view was. So this is going to be what my first frame is. I'm going to make sure I'm back here at my first frame so I get it lined up properly. All the way back to frame one. Okay. And we need to set up our resolution so we can look at our uh, resolution gate and make sure that we're framing properly. To do that, we're going to come under this fourth icon over here for the render settings. Click on that one. It's going to open up my render settings. And we're going to stick with just basic Maya software rendering for this one. Uh, as we progress in the semester, we're going to be using Mental Ray and then finishing up with Arnold. But for now, we're just going to keep it simple with Maya software. So under here, we're going to change three things. The output format we want to change from Maya FF to a QuickTime movie. Right here. And we're going to come down to here. And we need to select the uh, frame range. It's actually th four things that we have to do on here. So it starts at frame 1. We're going to end it at frame 200. OK. And instead of rendering with the perspective camera, we're going to choose our render cam that we set up. And our presets, we're going to set this to HD 720. I'm going to leave it where it's at right now. We'll come back and do this right when we get ready to do our final render. If we set it up at 720, it's going to slow down our renders on here while we are uh, setting up the lights and testing everything. So we'll come back to that. We're just going to leave it at 540 right now. And over here under the Maya Software tab, we're going to leave it at low quality. Uh, just before we get ready to render, we're going to come back and set it to highest quality. Uh, again, that's going to slow our renders down considerably, so we're going to leave it like that. Under Ray Tracing Quality, we want to make sure that Ray Tracing is turned on. This is going to give us more realistic shadows and the ability to uh, kind of create some reflections in here. Okay, so we can close that out. We've got that set. And we should be able to come over here and this film gate with the resolution in it and if we select that, we can now see what our camera is going to be rendering out. So I'm going to make a little adjustment to my camera and position my start frame right here. And I'm going to save this scene now. So we'll save scene as. And we're going to call this turntable version 1. Okay. And something I like to do with my camera, the render cam, so uh, if I accidentally come in here and forget that I'm looking through it and I move it, uh, I won't be able to come back to my original place. So what I want to do is set a keyframe for my camera. Uh, the camera's not going to move, it's going to remain stationary, but I'm going to make sure I have it set where I want it. So I'm selecting render cam up here in the outliner, making sure I'm on frame one, and just hitting S. So that will lock it. So if I happen to come in here and be moving it around like this and forget I'm in this camera, I can always just come back here and just touch anywhere on the timeline and it will set the camera back in its original place. Okay, so we've got our camera set up and we'll come back and we'll start dealing with materials and lighting.